What's up, everybody? Welcome back to my Twisted Life of Poetry. I am Poetry. You are here for a This Is Us review and recap, Season 2, Episode 17. This is big, amazing, beautiful life. Oh, now y'all remember that was the line that Randall had told Deja when she was leaving for that final time um, about this big, amazing, beautiful life that he has. And if she worked hard enough, she can obtain it as well, right? So this whole episode is about Deja. And y'all already know my, my regular This Is Us subscribers and watchers. Y'all already know that I was in my feelings in this episode there were so many emotions going through me for so many different reasons that i seem like i'm kind of melancholy right now because i'm still kind of like really absorbing it all and i watched this um show kind of late today but i still wanted to go ahead and just give it to you tonight it opens up with shauna she giving birth she scared out of her mind of what's happening to her body. Her grandma was being played by no other than Foxy Brown, Miss Pam Greer. <sighs> she said, don't worry, child. I was here with your mama doing the same thing. It's going to be all right. It's like deja vu to me, right? Then we go over to Becca giving birth to the original Big Three. Then we see Randall's mom giving birth to him. And last, Beth giving birth. I wasn't sure which baby if it was Tess or Annie, but I think it was Tess because I think that was the living room scene, right? Okay. So get all these beautiful babies. And y'all know I love me some goobers. I've been having baby fever for about three years. So just the sight of giving birth to these babies was already hitting me in my feels. Okay. So grandma comes and welcomes young Deja into the world. But it seems Shauna is so disconnected, you know. She's not here for the process. She's going through, um, what does they call it? I feel not PMS. Is it PTSD also after you have a baby? Yeah, she's going through a little bit of that, you know. But Grandma Foxy ain't having it. She said, look her child. You're going to hold your baby. You're going to get to know her. And you're going to love her. And your back ain't hurting that bad. <laughs> um... She said, all you mad about is a little knuckle boy, knucklehead boy named Dennis. You acting just like your mama right now. I want to chase after these little fast tail ass little boys, but not today. Not today. I'm going to ask the nurse to bring you something for your pain. But for right now, you're going to love on this baby. That's what we're going to do. It don't matter to me no more that you're 16 year old. You need to grow the hell up, put your big girl drawers on, and be a mama to this child. I'm like, come on through, Grandma. Come on through, Grandma. Like, one of the reasons why this became significant to me is the name Dennis. Um, for years, I didn't, um, I've been saying that my daddy ain't my damn daddy. And my godmother used to always tell me that there was a man named Dennis that was my father. So when that name popped up, I was like, uh, oh, okay, kind of hit me home a little bit because my mama's still saying that Dennis was my daddy, that I was already conceived when she was with Dennis. But my godmother was like, yeah, Dennis was your daddy. And I remember when I was little, I used to get little books the Bernstein Bears and Snow White and all the Walt Disney books. And all of those books came from a man named Dennis. I remember that as young as three years old. And the, the description in the front of the book was from a man named Dennis. So that just kind of resonated with me right there. So a few, little, a, few, few, a few years later, Grandma Foxy, she coming in from work, midnight all morning. And the day she's up playing with her bear. Shana ain't nowhere around. It's not even a shock to her that Shauna wasn't around, you know. She just kept it cool and read her little bedtime story called Good Night Moon. I don't remember that story as a child. I don't remember it all. Um, I thought it was the story Midnight Moon when she said it at first. Midnight Moon was, a, if you remember the cover, it was like a blue book. They had a big old cheese moon on the cover. And the man in the moon was reaching out for the little boy and the fairy godmother that was flying to the moon. That's the story I remember, Midnight Moon. I don't remember... Good night, Moon. If y'all ever were read that story as a child or you read that in the library as a child or have you read it, let me know. Let me know. I want to see how many people know what Good Night Moon was. Well, anyway, uh, next we see Randall reading the exact same story to Annie and Tess. Then Becca is reading it to her baby bump. You know, expecting mothers read 
to your babies. I know they're in your bellies, but read to your babies. Make your children fall in love with words before they can even speak them. Play them jazz. Play them classical music. Make them fall in love with the words that's not even spoken. Do that for your unborn babies, mothers. I'm just saying. Papas, you could do it too. You could sing to your babies. You know, take off all that, that rap and the twerking and the trapping and the, the pop music. Take all that crap out. Put some jazz on, some classical music on, and read a book to your babies. Okay. And keep reading to them once they are born. That's what I'm saying. <sighs> then we see little Jack reading the exact same book to his little brother, Nikki. And I'm just like, y'all will not get me in my feels this episode. That's not what you're going to do. We're not going to do that right now. I am not going to be in my feels about seeing little Jack reading to little Nikki. <sighs> well, after Grandma Foxy gets little Deja to sleep, she sit up waiting dragging on her cigarette now you know when you got a grandma used to drag on the cigarette pulling on that cigarette you know you was in trouble right <laughs> trying to walk in that door she got the nerve to say that she was only a couple blocks away at brandon's house brandon's house ain't where you supposed to be young lady you know he only lived two blocks away i practically could see him see her from where i was sitting Practically and actually being there, sitting with her, ain't the same doggone thing. You gonna leave this little three, four, five, six year old child in the house by her doggone self, woman, so you can go run off with Brandon? Hmm. Then she put them damn shoes on Grandma's table, baby. Oh. So Grandma Fox is like, so you thought feeding her some cold ass pizza? Putting on your little hoochie mama dress and go traipsing down a couple blocks with little Brandon. You thought that was the right thing to do. She was like, don't talk to me that way. I'm grown. I ain't no child. She said, oh, you grown. You grown. You, you, grown people, I got to stand and watch. Make sure they cleaning up, doing their dog on chores. That's what I got to do for grown people. Grown people pay bills up here. You ain't been paying no bills. Then Shana was like, um, you think I like living with you? You think I wanted to be living off you? I wasn't even supposed to be here. I was supposed to be in college and stuff. You should have thought about that before you laid down and spread your legs with having no protection on. That's what you should have thought about. But you know what? Grandma said you're right. I didn't expect you to be here either. Okay? So now Shana feeling convicted and stuff. So she's apologized to her. She's like, you know, I'm sorry. And Grandma Fox is like, you know what? I know you're sorry. I know you are. But I can't be here for you forever. I can't be carrying this burden on my back for you too much longer. Then the next time we seen them, they walking down the hallway carrying some groceries. All of a sudden, Grandma Foxy collapses in the hallway. Had to be a heart attack. Next, we see Randall holding our dear William's hat in his hand, tears in his eyes from William's death. Becca is crying. I'm not sure if this is after Jack died or after the first baby didn't make it, you know. Then young William's eyes are so full of tears over his loss. I wasn't sure if this was because of Randall's mom or his own mom. I'm thinking it's maybe his own mom because all of those prescription drugs that was there. And then uh, Shauna is like, what now, baby? She's speaking to little Deja, what now? And she starts to break down and crying. And Deja brings her to comfort by reading her Good Night Moon. And I'm like, this must have been the point right here that Deja felt that she needed to start taking care of her mama at that such young and tender age. Well, now older Deja is in the kitchen cooking. Tess and Annie are cooking up a meal with old dear William. Then we see Becca cooking with the kids. They laughing and joking and having fun. And at this very moment is when I realized that Deja is all alone. She is cooking by herself, while everybody else is out there bonding with their family member, their loved one, having fun. For Deja, cooking is a chore. Like she's being forced to be a grown up. She's being forced to be an adult. And then we see Shauna rushing around the house. And Deja shared her half a grilled cheese sandwich that she just made. And that's to know that the water doesn't be cut off. Unfortunately, Shauna don't get paid till Friday. At least they showing us that Shauna has a job and she's trying to be somewhat responsible parent. The ends just ain't coming together. You know, the bills are higher than the income, it seems. But apparently Shauna is late for work and she chooses to take Deja to school instead of getting to work on time. It's her birthday. She wants to spend more time with her daughter in, in the morning time. And I am readying myself for Shauna getting fired. That's what I'm feeling right here. 
Deja promises her a birthday dinner. She says she's going to get home by 7. Cool, right? Well, apparently Shana didn't get fired. But she ain't came home yet. And Deja's trying to cook dinner. She's trying to cook Grandma Fox's jambalaya recipe. And she listens to the Manny on TV. Did y'all realize that was the Manny playing? Well, anyway, <laughs> I got one of the best jambalaya recipes from my ex-boyfriend's mother. Oh, my God. It is so good. I'm not a person that eats uh, shelled seafood or pork. So the recipe that she has, it's like so perfect for me. I made it for my um, my last fiance back when I was in uh, Antigua. And, oh, my God, he fell in love with it. Now he makes it for himself. So it's like a recipe that we just pass it on, pass it on, pass it on. I got it from my ex-boyfriend, gave it to my ex-fiance. He probably gave it to his next girlfriend. It's a good-ass recipe for some jambalaya. Um, well, anyway, Dave's just trying to open up the can good with one of those old school cans, can openers, and cuts herself real deep right here. Mm. And she can't rinse it off because the water is off. Now I'm confused how she was going to make this damn food because you need some water to make jambalaya. Well, anyway, she tried to reach Shauna, but it goes to the voicemail and the blood is rushing off fast. I mean, it's rushing fast. So bad that she got to take her own self into the ER. And I'm thinking this is not going to be good. This is not going to be good. They have to report that this child walked into that hospital without adult supervision. And they're going to get shot and ask for neglect. I can see it coming. The day is just getting stitched up next. And we see little Kevin walking alongside the gurney with little Kate. And she's been wheeled through the hospital. I forgot exactly why Kate was going to the hospital. Y'all remind me in the comment section. Did she have like appendicitis or something like that? Then in comes Linda. I knew it. In comes Linda. Apparently, she called Shana's job. They say she ain't even there. Where you at, girl? This is what I'm trying to figure out. Where you at, woman? Right then, she comes rushing into the hospital. I'm like, phew, okay. And then she's like, where were you? Like, hey, what's going on? She's like, you know, I went out with, uh, for my birthday and then my phone died. I was like, oh, pump the brakes. No, you did not say you went out for your birthday when you knew your daughter was going to be at home cooking for dinner for you. Well, Linda's like, hey, we need to talk. She's like, who is you? Who are you? But we need to talk. And I'm thinking, why, Shauna? Damn it, why? I would have felt so much better about the situation, even though at least the outcome probably still would have been the same. I would have felt so much better about it if you were actually at fucking work. <sighs> they take Deja. They take Deja from Shauna. I actually didn't think they'd take the children that quick. I thought that they, after one incident, it had to be like repeated incidents, but after that first incident, they start doing home visits to make sure that you aren't neglecting the child before they determine if the child needs to be removed from the home. Correct me if I'm wrong, y'all. But like my foster mom dealt with a lot of, my, my foster mom, my aunt dealt with a lot of foster kids. So that usually was a situation for them. They actually monitored the family first before they decided whether or not the child was going to be taken out of her care. Well, anyway, Deja is at a foster home with another little girl named Raven. Raven is teaching her how to dance. The foster dad comes in the room like, hey, y'all get y'all butt to school. Little girl is like, um, hey, the buses ain't even going yet, foster dad, you know. She all snazzy and a little bit too mouthy-mouthy for a little girl her age. But coming up in that system, sometimes you understand why they got such aggression. And since we don't know the depths of what's going on with this man, it, you know, she may have cause and reason to be acting the way that she does. But anyway... He's like, if you don't get your butt out of here through this door, I'm going to send your ass out of here through the doggone window, right? And the raven walks up to the window, opens it up, and says, okay, show me. She must be from Missouri. She must be from the show me state. She could pull this punk card. I said, don't play with him like that, girl. Don't play with him like that. You never know what that crazy ass man might do. Anyway, they walking down the street um, because, again, the buses weren't there, foster dad. So they just like, girl, what are you doing? Why are you so mean to him? And, um... She said, I'm saving you. That's what I was doing. Because if he mad at me, then that's going to keep him from beating your ass. You know what I'm saying? So he going to do it when he drunk anyway. So I might as well have fun right now. So I was like, this little girl to grow for me, but I kind of understand. <laughs> so next she's trying to get Deja to do a five-finger discount because they got a little dance at school to go to. And Deja ain't got no makeup. So she's like, we can go steal it. We going to roll into Mr. Ball and store. And Deja's like, no, that's not what we're going to do. <laughs> and uh, right, just like, yeah, that's what we're going to do. Stop being soft. You a good girl. I know. You sweet. You soft. Let's go and get this, right? So they go in there and they steal this damn makeup. And I'm like, oh. 
And you can walk about a store and they make it to the house and they try on the makeup. And then ding, 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 dong, knock, knock, knock on the door. It's Mr. Baldwin. He done came and snitched on him. Oh, well, after Mr. Baldwin leave, Raven readies herself. She readies herself. And then foster dad, Mr. Miller, pushes her down, shoves her to the floor. He about to go for Deja next and Raven jumps up in front of her and then she takes that blow for Deja. Ah. Oh. Then Jack's, little Jack's dad slaps the shit out of him. Then Jack punches back his uh, bandmate, right? And Deja stand there fear, fearfully in shock. And she tells um, Raven, he ain't never hit you like that before. I ain't never seen him hit you in such a manner. But Raven doesn't say anything. She doesn't buzz, right? So Linda drops by for a visit. And Deja's like, when do I get to go home? You know what I'm saying? Y'all, it's been a year. It's been a year, and now Shauna is in and out of rehab. She done picked up a doggone habit. Either she done picked up a habit, because they say she done picked it up since I've been gone. You know, she misses me. That's why she picked up this habit. But maybe that was what her problem was all along and why she couldn't keep the bills paid. I know when our water got cut off once upon a time, I went out of town. I came back in town. I was 17. Came home, and there was no water. And I was like, I know I left money for the water bill, because I was the one working in the household. And... My mom's, she was a drug addict, had beat the shit out of my cousin and took the money for the bills. And now we didn't have no fucking water in the damn house, right? Yeah. So maybe that was why she didn't have um, water on in the house. Well, uh, Linda was like, is everything okay here? First day, I was going to lie. You know, yeah, everything's good. Everything's copacetic. And then as Linda was getting ready to walk out, I was like, I'll see you in a couple weeks. I heard you got to dance next week. That's fun. Hey, go have your dance. Then you say, oh, no, he hits us. He beats the shit out of us, right? So next we see Raven and Deja being escorted out of the house. And Raven is pissed. She pissed. They're not going to make that dance next week. But that ain't what Raven mad about. Like, Raven probably has been in so many situations. And the Millers probably was like icing on the cake. You know, these kids go through so much shit doing in the, in the foster care system that they finally get to a place that, that ain't good, but still better than everybody else. So now they're in a damn group home. And Raven don't want to speak to Deja. But Deja apologized. And she was like, you know, I had to say something. I had to say something. And then Raven turned around and said, you know what? I've been bounced from house to house. You know how many? I don't even know. I stopped counting when I was nine. She said, at least the only thing that he did was beat me. Which was implying that she's been through a lot worse, you know what I'm saying? So she said, at least there, you know, we had each other. We could have been there in those beds together forever. And now they're going to separate us. We're going to be bounced from bed to bed alone, not able to protect one another. Well, Linda went ahead and brought Deja home to Shauna. Then we see Kate opening up the door to Becca. So it was like Deja coming home to Shauna was like what Shauna needed at that time. She was Kate in that moment, you know what I'm saying? She needed her protection. She needed her comfort. And Deja was always been the comfort for Shauna. So this is Deja's first night home. And Shauna has already invited over some dude from rehab named Lonzo. And I'm not liking where this is going in my mind. He better not be fucking touching her. So when Shauna is all smitten with this dude and he making promises to take her to the DR and Deja is not checking for him. She's like, where you work? What you do, when, what, and how for? You know, how, how, you know, what do you do for a living? And he tries to comfort her with words and tells her how much he cares about her mom. And he just wants Deja to give him a chance. But that don't last too long. Now he's drinking. Mm -hmm. And they are fussing and are fighting. Apparently, he's taking her money, claiming it's for a business deal. And it's probably for drugs or something like that. Because a lot of drug addicts always come up with some fascinating deal or gig or something that they can invest in, you know, to help support their habit. You know, so, but Jack, he, he drinking. He, Lonzo is definitely drinking for sure. Then they show Jack drinking. Then they show Kevin drinking. And then Lonzo is like, I'm doing all this for us. I'm trying to make sure that I get you and Deja up out of here, have a better life than what we live in, right? Then Lonzo's got a gun. That damn gun that Shauna went to jail for. And she tells him to get out the house. You know what? Get the gun out the house. It can't be around my kid. I got a child in here. And he said, you know what? You better off without me. So I'm up out here. Of course, Shauna, in need for her love from a man, she runs out to him. And Deja's brushing her hair. She's stressed the hell out right now. 
It's falling out. Remember the alopecia? Her hair is falling out. Soon after, Lonzo is at home in the morning with a couple of his friends, and Shauna is trying to rush out the house to work, but she can't find her keys. Deja comes in and tells her she's going to be late for school. she got an after-school program. she got something to do. And Shauna leaves. Deja gives Lonzo this look. And I'm thinking he better not be fucking touching her. But I know that look. She starts to clean up the dishes. And Lonzo's like, oh, you got a math test, right? And he offers to help her get real close. And then she gives him that look again. Like, I will cut you where you stand. That look. And she exits. And I'm saying he better not be fucking touching her, but I think that he is. That's that look. You know what I'm saying? Because then he has like a, a somewhat of a look of remorse when she walks away. Some pity, a little bit of shame about himself. But they don't specifically tell us. They just imply it. Well, at school, Deja's is after school in her little dance practice. They got a little competition coming up, you know. And uh, I, Deja is supposed to be doing a solo. So she is ready for this damn solo. And it's like she got a few other girls. She all excited. And right, she get called to the front of the class. Two officers walk in. They draw their attention towards Deja. And I'm like, damn it, man. She about to miss another dance. First the dance at school, and now the dance competition. This must have been when Charlotte got locked up. Because, like, yep, her bring, here come Linda, bringing her to Beth and Randall Pearson's house. Well, Shana was a little right, though, you know, because Randall made a lot of assumptions about why she was in jail that weren't true. You know, they had her pegged as a, a low life thug and criminal and stuff like that. And um, she did make some bad decisions, but it wasn't as what Randall and Beth thought. So, as Deja is sitting there in the reading chair at the house in Tess and Annie's room, she reflects on Raven telling her that the next time that she finds a bed that feels anywhere close to safe, don't screw it up. Don't blow it. Then we breeze through Deja's journey at the Pearsons and come back to Shana. And at first I didn't notice that when Shana picked her up that Linda was in the car behind him. And I was like, how the heck did, how the heck did Linda just allow... Shauna just come pick her up at their house, but she was there with them too. Well, Shauna promises Deja that Lonzo is gone. You know, that past is behind him too. And this time she was going to do right by her. Shauna and them paying the bills. They happy, you know, smiling, chuckling up. Jack is paying the bills. Then the money starts running low on Shauna. Deja ends up at the Pearsons asking for $89 to pay for a gas bill. The next day, the landlord comes by and tells her, they got to the end of the month to pay the rent. You had three checks bounced. You ain't got no much time. You gotta you gotta pay up or you gotta be out of there. Deja checks the cash box and it's empty. The money she just put in there from Randall was in the box, but now it's empty. Shana done took the money and claimed it was for bills at first. She seemed like she geeking and tweaking to me. That's what she seemed like to me. But now she took the money and bailed out Lonzo because she feels it's her fault that he's in jail. That was the last straw for Deja. She was like, you ain't never going to change. You ain't never changing. But of course, trying to tell her to stay at the kid's place. Well, Deja runs to her room and calls Randall. But of course, Randall in Vegas. Deja packed up her bag. And at first, I thought she was running away. But instead, she takes herself down to a pawn shop. Of course, they don't take clothes, you know, because that's what she packed up. But then she remembers she had Grandma Fox's brooch in her bag. And we see Jack giving his necklace to Kevin, his keepsake. And then the dope kept him holding it, remembering his dad. Then we go back to Deja holding that brooch, not wanting to let go of the last piece of thing, piece of something that she got from Grandma Foxy. So she doesn't. She tucks it back into her bag. Then she gets that phone call from Randall. And uh, she heads home and starts to pack her life up. And they escorted out by the police. And Randall and Beth, after they come back from Vegas, they find them on the street asleep in the car. So back at the house. Tess and Annie rush in, all happy to see Deja. And Shana says, this is just temporary, y'all. You know, we ain't going to darken your doorstep too long. And the way that Shana is looking at how happy Deja is with the family, I'm feeling like Shana's going to take off and leave without her. And I'm hoping I'm wrong because I'm hoping that Shana sees this as motivation to keep her family together. I hope she sees this as motivation to want to put that smile on Deja's face herself. I'm hoping that she wants to have the motivation to keep their heads above water. Shana's down there talking to Beth, and I'm thinking, that, um, and she realizes at this moment that Deja's childhood has been stolen from her. You know, she said this is the first time that she's seen her act 
like a child. All of her life, she has depended on Deja. She has always said, I don't know what I do without her. This is something that Shauna, um, that Deja should be feeling about her mother, but Shauna has always felt like Deja needed to be there for her. She's always leaned on Deja. And she was like, what kind of parent does that? That's my mama. Y'all just don't understand. That's my dog on my That's why I say this is resonated with me so well. I am 44 years old and I have not once in my life felt like my mother was there for me. I have always been there for my mother. Like I'm the goddamn parent. Like helping her take care of bills, helping her with advice, helping her do this, that, and the third. Like, I'm talking about moving. I'm trying to move, and I was considering moving my mother with me to help her just get out of St. Louis, get out of the old life that we've had. And she's like, just the conversation we had yesterday was feeling like I'm supposed to be taking care of everything. I'm supposed to be paying for the whole move, paying for the... Like, what the fuck? No. Like, at what point in your life do you start being my mother? Like, I called her up once upon a time for some fucking advice. My daughter was going to the ER, and I was like, Mom, what should I do, you know? And she couldn't even give me advice on that, you know? I have always been in the parent role when it comes to my mother. And so, like, this was, like, really resonate with me. I was like, oh, my fucking God. And I've always wanted her to just step up. At 44, I'm still trying to get my mother to step up and be my fucking mother, which is why I felt so passionate for Shauna to take the god dog on reins and step the fuck up and be a parent to Deja. <sighs> anyway, Randall comes in to check on Deja and he asks her what's on her mind. She ran off to the room and, um, <laughs> yeah, you know, um, Shauna was feeling kind of slighted because Deja was like, hey, deuces, you know, I ain't seen the morning, bye. You know, and um, she says, you know, she's been thinking about sleep. How fascinating it is that everybody on this world, no matter where they are in life, what they have in life or what they don't have at the end of their life, they all have to sleep. So I find that there's something that I have in common with people that I don't even know. And there's other things I have in common, like pain, like things that make me happy. You know, I was like, this child has such a mature way of thinking. It's like, damn, girl, you know, I feel you on that. But she said, you know, she was think also thinking about all the beds. She sounded like a raven at this moment. Thinking about all the beds that she slept in in her life and how high that number is. And right now, she is just tired. Physically tired, mentally tired, emotionally tired. I know you are, baby girl. I know you are tired. I am exhausted for you. Whew. Randall comes downstairs and Shauna has her bags in hand. Ready to walk out that door, just like I suspected. Ready to walk out that door. And I'm like, damn, 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 Shauna. I was rooting for you, girl. Like, hoping that <sighs> Randall and Beth would say, stay. You can stay here as long as you need. Or hoping that they would, like, give her an apartment. Like one of the uh, commenters said last week. Um, sorry, I can't remember who said it. Um, but yeah, like they offer her apartment in the building, not, but hoping for something better other than walking away from that child. And I know some people are here probably saying that's probably the best thing for Deja is for her mother to walk away from her. For me, I think that's the easy part. Walking away from your responsibility and not actually putting forth the real effort to make a better way. You've been doing stuff over the time but you know you've been doing more wrong stuff that's hurting and hindering your way of life with your daughter than right stuff instead of you trying to take those steps to change all that shit around the right way for real you walking away so walking away is the easy part for me staying is going to be the hard part that's the end of this episode y'all i'm about to get emotional again i'm trying not to uh, this is us this big amazing beautiful life Thank y'all for coming back to the channel. Leave all your comments in the comment section. If you feel I left anything out, leave it in the comment section. If you want to talk about your stories as well, how this resonated with you, leave that as well. Y'all know I love your comments. Like, comment, share, and subscribe to the channel. I appreciate you. Peace.